Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. The National Association of Police writes a letter to Frontier Airlines over a mask incident. The Solera 500L has completed 31 successful test flights. And the Cessna Citation Latitude turns 5. I'm Sophie Herlock. The head of the National Association of Police Organization has written a letter to the CEO of Frontier Airlines after a federal air marshal was asked by a gate agent to remove his American flag gator style face covering while trying to board his flight. In the letter, NAPO President Michael McHale stated, While attempting to board the plane, the federal air marshal wearing the American flag mask was sought by the gate agent, advised that he should wear another mask, and was handed a disposable one. The federal air marshal politely put the mask on and then covered that mask with his American flag mask. The gate agent then told him to remove the American flag mask or he would not be allowed to board the plane, as it would create issues with the other passengers. Meanwhile, several passengers with Black Lives Matter masks boarded the plane. The Federal Air Marshal was let onto the plane after taking off the Gator-style mask, and a Frontier Airlines spokesperson has since described the situation as a misunderstanding, explaining that the gate agent thought the Federal Air Marshal's face covering was a bandana, which is not allowed in their policy. CEO of Frontier Airlines Barry L. Biffle stated, We have investigated the facts at length. The gate agent in question believed that the Federal Air Marshal's Gator-style mask was not in compliance with our mask policy, which we have modified and updated several times. She offered the Federal Air Marshal an alternate mask to resolve the concern. Although we do allow Gator-style masks, and the agent misinterpreted our policy. Her objection to the Federal Air Marshal's original mask in no way related to its American flag emblem. We'll be right back with Around the Patch. We spent days flying and burning fuel and experiencing the new Swift fuel. I'm pretty dang impressed. I mean, to come up with a high octane replacement fuel with no lead, that's a tall order. If they continue to go the way they're going, Swift fuel will have a replacement fuel of the market. It's better for the environment. It's cleaner on your engine. That's game changer. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Welcome back, it's time for today's trip around the patch. Brigadier General Dennis O'Reilly, the commander of the 2 Canadian Air Division, has lifted the operational pause of the CT-114 Tudor fleet. Put in place after the death of Captain Jen Casey in the May 17 CT-114 Tudor accident in Kamloops, British Columbia. The return to flying operations follows a thorough technical and operational risk analysis that has outlined a series of risk mitigation measures. Since there were two Snowbirds accidents in the span of eight months, the scope of the analysis was designed to be broad, detailed, and deliberate in order to enhance the safety of the CT-114 Tudor operations. UK startup Hill Helicopters is promoting the HX-50, an all-new 5-seat turbine-powered 500-horsepower rotocraft helicopter design, promised to deliver a whole new experience in safety, performance, adventure, comfort, and elegance. The proposed design will have a maximum takeoff weight of 3,630 pounds, a payload capacity of 1,760 pounds, and a max cruise speed of 140 knots true airspeed, at max gross weight up to 10,000 feet. Dr. Jason Hill, founder and CEO of Hill Helicopters stated, The helicopter industry has long awaited an Elon Musk-style disruption that redefines the modern helicopter. The wait is over. 
The Allied Pilots Association, representing the 15,000 pilots of American Airlines, is urging the White House and Congress to negotiate a new stimulus package that would maintain the industry and its jobs. American Airlines management stated 17,167 employees, including 1,605 pilots represented by APA, will be furloughed starting October 1st, as that's the earliest date any furloughs are allowed under the terms of the CARES Act payroll support program. American Airlines CEO Doug Parker and President Robert Isom have stated multiple times that furloughs could be prevented if the PSP is extended. The first new EASA certified CC-19X Cub has now shipped for Europe from the Cub Crafters Company headquarters in Yakima, Washington. The aircraft will be placed on the United Kingdom registry as Gulf Oscar Bravo Tango Oscar. The inaugural customer, Gerard Oberholzer, stated, A key purpose of having an aircraft like this is to be able to travel across England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland on business enabling very efficient access to often remote parts of the islands, using the aircraft as a working tool. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Aviation officially introduced the Solera 500L, and the full-scale prototype has already completed 31 successful test flights. The company currently holds seven patents, further contributing to the potential of the aircraft. Auto states the aircraft has a maximum cruise speed of 450 miles an hour, a range of over 4,500 miles, a large stand-up cabin, and fuel economies of only 18 to 25 miles per gallon. The Solera 500L utilizes extensive laminar flow properties over the fuselage, wings and tail surfaces to reduce drag and achieve superior aerodynamic, speed, and fuel efficiency. The manufacturing detail delivers cruise efficiencies unmatched by conventional aircraft while offering a clean sheet design. Textron is celebrating five years since the first customer delivery of the Cessna Citation Latitude. With nearly 240 delivered to date, the Citation Latitude jet now comprises more than 40% of all mid-sized business jet deliveries since 2015 and has surpassed the 320,000 fleet hours since entry into service. The aircraft entered the market in 2015 and quickly established itself as a Citation with the highest average daily utilization with leading private aviation company NetJets, taking more than 120 deliveries. With cabin space for seven passengers and the ability to fly non-stop between destinations such as Los Angeles and New York, Geneva and Dubai, the Citation Latitude business jet has serviced NetJet's owners with certification in more than 40 countries. The Citation Latitude jet is also one of the company's fleet of 13 commercial turbine aircraft capable of flying with sustainable aviation fuel. And that's it for this week, everyone. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. To stay up to date on the latest aviation aerospace news this weekend, head over to aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and come back Monday for another episode of Airborne Unlimited. Mm -hmm.